I hope you have your Bibles open to Ephesians. If you don't have them open yet, take some time. Open them up right now to Ephesians in chapter 1. I love this young person over here who has this worthy Bible. And she is opening her Bible that she thinks is a whole Bible. But it's a little children's storybook. And she has captured my heart. <laughs> Friends, um, we have been having a most wonderful, what we call, sealing message on the app, in the afternoons. And Miss Buffy has been the one who has helped us by putting sermons from some of the uh, pioneers, the earlier preachers, onto um, slides with the sermon. Well, today you're going to have me try to read through a sermon, and that sermon is going to come from a very special source. It is going to come from 1893. The writer is named A.T. Jones, and this is sermon number 17, You Can Be Sure. So this is not my sermon, this is A.T. Jones' sermon, but in order to make it real and feel like we're alive, when you see it say congregation on there, or even if it doesn't say congregation and you agree with something that's being said, amen. let's be alive, alive and awake. Let's say amen, say yes, say what you need to to agree with the word and help it be something that sinks down in your heart and uh, we will be progressing as we go, okay? So I'm reading a sermon and I hope that you will enjoy it as much as I have enjoyed it every time I've read it. But I'm going to read it like I'm preaching it, if you don't mind. Is that okay with you? Amen. Is that okay with you? Amen. Thank you. <clears throat> well, let us see what the Lord has done and how He works and how He brings us up to that place. Let us begin where He began. We'll read first from Ephesians chapter 1, verses 3 through 6. And that takes us to the point where God began concerning us and that will be as far back as we need to go. The third verse. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ. Take a look at that screen, would you? You talk about heavenly places. What is it that he hath done, though, congregation? Blessed us. Is it so? Yes. Has he done it? Yes. He has blessed us with how many blessings? All the spiritual blessings. All the blessings He has, He's given us all? Yes. How? In Christ. In Christ. Then in giving Christ, what did God give? All the spiritual blessings. And the, all the spiritual blessings that He had? Well then, when you and I believe in Christ, Jesus Christ, are we not blessed? Have we not all the blessing that the Lord has? then what is going to bother us? A person that is blessed like that, is he going to be anything else than happy? No. Can he have the blues? No. Can he get into the sulks because things don't just go right? No. However things go, they can't take his blessing away. But the fourth verse is the one particularly that I want to read, according as he hath chosen us. Will he choose us? Will choose us? Absolutely. Has he? Yes. And when did he do it? Before the foundation of the world. Thank the Lord. Before the foundation of the world, he chose you and me. Praise the Lord. Now, will you say amen to that every time? Amen. I do not mean just now. Will you say it all the time? Yes. How long is that scripture going to remain there? <coughs> Forever? Then how long is it going to be true that he had chosen you before the foundation of the world? Always. Then how long are you going to be bothered to know whether you are the Lord's or not? Hasn't he chosen you? Yes. Hasn't he chosen you? Yes. What did he do for it? What did he do it for? 
because he wanted us? Did he? Yes. Yes. He chose me because he wanted me and he shall have me. I'm not going to rob him and disappoint his choice. He has chosen us, hasn't he? Yes. Well, before the foundation of the world. Now, the rest of that verse, that we should be holy and without blame before him in love. His blessed purpose is he wants us to be holy and without blame before him in love. Then we can't let him have his... Then we can let him have his own way because it is our everlasting salvation to let him do it. Amen. Now the next verse is having predestinated according to the destiny that he wants us to reach long beforehand. That destiny that God fixes for man is worth having. Amen. Having predestinated us unto the adoption of children by Jesus Christ to himself according to the good pleasure of his will. And why did he do it then? Not because we were so good, but because he is so good. Not because we were so well pleasing to him, but because of the good pleasure of his own will. It was just himself to do it, and just like himself to do it, and that's why he did it. Verse 6 now. To the praise of the glory of his grace, wherein he hath made us accepted in the beloved, in the beloved. Should we turn off these screen lights so you can see a little better? Thank you. To the praise of the glory of his grace, wherein he has made us accepted in the beloved. The, now what do you say to that? Amen. And when did he do that? Before the foundation of the world. Pre precisely before the foundation of the world. That answers all this idea about whether we can do anything in order to be justified or not. He did it all before we had any chance to do anything. Long before we were born. Long before the world was made. Don't you see that the Lord is the one that does things in order that we may be saved and that we may have Him? Amen. Now see what He has done. Number one. He has blessed us with all spiritual blessings in Christ. Number two, he has chosen us in him before the foundation of the world. And number three, he has predestinated us unto the adoption of children by Jesus Christ. Yeah. And four, and he hath made us accepted in the beloved. Yeah. By the way, how many of you would like to be feel accepted when you go into a room? Does it feel good to be accepted? Yes. To be welcomed? Yes. To be part of something? Yes. Amen. It does. It does feel good. And it's the contrary wise. It doesn't feel good when you feel like, hmm, they, I'm not too sure they want me here. This wonderful thing that in this scripture says, He hath made us accepted in the beloved. Well, I'm glad of it. I know that it is so. Amen. And don't you? Yes. For He says so. He says so. Here then are four things that we can be everlasting sure of. A word further about those blessings the Lord has given us. We have all the blessings that God has when we believe Jesus Christ. Amen. Then they are our own. We don't need to be so very particular about praying for blessings. Would we not do better thinking to spend time, our time in thanking Him for the blessings that we have than in asking Him for blessings? How does that look? Which do you think looks the better? To thank the Lord for the blessings He has already given, or to ask Him to give us some more when He hasn't any more to give? If He gave all, He hasn't any more to give. Hmm. Now which is better? For He has given us all the blessings He has in Christ. Christ says, I am with you, brethren. Let us feed on the blessings. We have them and they are our own. Then we can be sure all the time that we have all spiritual blessings. We can be sure all the time that He has chosen us. He says He has. We can be sure all the time that He has predestinated us unto the adoption of children. We can be sure all the time that He has made us accepted in the Beloved. 
We can be sure of all these things, for God says so, and it is so. Then isn't that a continual feast itself? Now he has done all that and has done it freely. For how many people did he do this? All. Every soul? Yes. Give the, all the blessings he has to every soul in all in the, this world. He chose every soul in the world, right? He chose him in Christ before the foundation of the world, predestinated him unto the adoption of children, and made him accepted in the beloved. Did he not? Yes. yes. Of course he did. And we will read other verses on that presently. The thought I'm after just now is that no one can have these things and know they are his without his own consent. Without your own consent. The Lord will not force any of these things upon a man, even though he has already given them, will he? No. There is a cooperation, you see. God pours out everything in one wondrous gift. What's that gift, folks? Christ. God pours out everything in one wondrous gift, but if a man will not have it, the Lord will not compel him to have a bit of it. Every man that will take it, it is all his own. That There is where the cooperation come in, comes in. The Lord has to have our cooperation in all things. Now let's turn to Titus chapter 2 and verse 14. Speaking of the Lord, it says, Who gave himself for us. That is the past tense too, is it not? It is done. Gave himself for us. Past tense. That is done. He did give himself for how many people? All. And how many people on the earth can read that text and say, That means me? All. Every soul on the earth. And wherever we go then, on this earth, and find a man, we can read that, read to him that Christ gave himself for you. Can we not? Yes. I think I'm going to keep that phrase in my vocabulary, in my little pocket. Can you say it again with me? Christ gave himself for you. What a thing to tell somebody. It's just so beautiful. Oops. He gave himself for you then. And that is the price that Peter refers to in 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 18 through 20. We'll read it right now. Why don't you read it out loud with me, congregation? For as much as ye know that ye were not redeemed with corruptible things as silver and gold from your vain conversation received by tradition from your fathers, but with, but with the precious blood of Christ, as of a lamb without blemish and without spot, who verily was foreordained before the foundation of the world. Wow. This wasn't just a plan God came up with an Adam and Eve sin. It was foreordained before the foundation of the world. Now we want each individual to know where he stands. He gave himself for me. Say it. He gave himself for me. That's stated in Galatians chapter 2, uh, verse 20. The life which I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. Well, how many people in the world can read that and say that means me? Everyone. Loved me and gave himself for me. That was the price that was paid. Then he bought me, did he? Yes. He bought you. Yes. And whether you or I let him have us, that is not just the question just now. What has he done? What did he do? Before the foundation of the world, he bought me, did he not? And you, then whose are we? Lord. Is this true? Yes. Well, then, is there any prospect of your getting into doubt of as to whether you are the Lord's? How is a man who wants to be the Lord's and has confessed his sins, how is it possible for him to get into doubt as to whether he's the Lord's or not? It is only by going back on the word of God altogether and not believing it at all and saying that the Lord has lied. Is not that the only way that he can do it, get into doubt? 
He that believeth not God has made him a liar. He that believeth not God has made him a liar. He, then the only way a man can doubt as to whether he's the Lord's or not is by going back on the word of God and saying that the Lord lies. That's the only way he could do it. Because for a man to doubt is to do that. He may not do that in so many words, but when he gets into doubt as to whether he's the Lord's, that is, done, that is what he has done. If I'm out doubt, doubting whether I belong to Jesus after I've confessed my sins and asked him to take me as his child, and I doubt about it, I'm saying God's lying. God's a lie. He has allowed unbelief to overthrow him and Satan to get the advantage and sweep away everything, everything away. That is so. But still, though the Lord has bought us, he will not, the Lord will not take what he has bought without our permission. There is a line which God has set as fixing the freedom of every man, and he himself will never go over that line a hair's breadth without our permission. He respects the freedom and dignity which he has given to intelligent creatures, whether man or angels. Do you believe it? Amen. He respects it, and he himself will not transgress the limit. He will not go over the limits without the permission of that person. But when the permission <coughs> is given, then he will come for all that he is. Amen. Then that opens the floodgates and the Lord flows in. That is so well then, he has bought you. Has he? Yes. Do you want to be the Lord's? Yes. Now friends, let us make this a real practical, tangible thing. He has bought us, has he not? Yes. He has paid the price for us. We are his by his will. Now then, when our will is there, whose are we then? The Lord's. He has shown his will on that subject by paying the price, has he not? And when we make known our will on the subject by saying, Lord, that is my choice too, that is the way my will goes too, then I want to know how in the universe anything is going to keep us from being His. Then can you know that you are the Lord's? Yes. Can you, can you right now know that you are the Lord's? Yes. Well, suppose you get up in the morning with a headache and your digestion does not work very well during the night and you feel rather bad all over and just don't feel right. How do you know you are the Lord's? Because he says so. Can you say that out loud? Because, because he, he says, says so. so. And suppose you get up in the morning and you feel bright and hilarious and you feel pretty good generally. How do you know you are the Lord's? Because he says so. Because he says so. And um, some people say when we ask them have your sins been forgiven and they say something like yes i was convinced they were for a while what convinced you i felt as though they were forgiven they did not know anything about it they did not in that have a particle of evidence that their sins were forgiven why brethren and sisters, the only evidence that we can have that these things are so is that God says so. That is the evidence. Amen. Don't look to feelings. Amen. Feelings are as variable as the wind, and you know that is so. Never pay a particle of attention to them. It's none of your business how you feel. <laughs> when God says so, it is so, whether I feel so or not. I'll give that illustration again. I've given it before, but it emphasizes this point that feeling has nothing to do with facts. Two, twice two is four, is it not? Yeah. But you know that is so, but there are some people in the world who do not know that twice two is four. But suppose you should tell someone, he, someone and he should believe it, how do you think he would feel? Do you suppose he would feel as though he'd been picked up and whirled in a sort of half somersault and sit down in a new place? No. What in the world has feeling got to do with that? Then what does he care? What do you care how you feel? And look at all these feelings. Anxious, affectionate, afraid, minded, awful, awkward, abandoned, aggravated, pensive, quarrelsome, empathetic, needy, reluctant, ugly, volatile, petty. 
Nitty, jumpy, keen, troubled, magical, hesitant, smirky, mad, meek. And what does he care how he feels? Now that is not saying that there will be no, no experience as the fruit of this. But it is saying that if you look for feelings of it as an evidence, you will never find the evidence. But if you look to the Word of God for the evidence, then you will get the evidence which God gives in His Word. That is, His own divine power in that Word, effectually working in the man who believes. Amen. Well then, the Lord has bought us, has He not? Now, as far as you and I are concerned, we need not have any more doubts as to whether we are the Lord's. That, that is so, right? Yes. yes. But there are some people in the world who are not really in real experience. And as a matter of fact, so far as the consummation of the bargain is concerned, <clears throat> they have not submitted themselves to the Lord and are not practically His. He has made them by His, He has made them His by His purchase. Now, how can they know that they are his practically and indeed? And I'm going to need some water. <coughs> and I didn't make a permission for myself. So, Donovan, come here. <coughs> Please. Oh, you're going to give me water. Well, while I'm reading, I want you to read. By his word. By his word. By his chosen for him, himself to give him just what that way. By choosing for themselves to have it just that way. By choosing. Page 44 in Step to Christ gives the whole philosophy of him. It tells how to make the surrender, the surrender of ourselves to God. It says that your promises and resolution are like rope of sand. And the knowledge of your broken promise and forfeited pledge weaken, weakens your confidence in your own sincerity. He came to the rescue, and thank you who came to the rescue with this. And finally, what you need to understand is the true force of the will. You cannot save yourself. You cannot change your heart. But you can choose to serve Him. And I hope that this is going to sink down into our hearts. Can you say that? You can choose to serve Him. <clears throat> When the man chooses to put his will on the side where God's will is, then the thing is accomplished. Then it is at man's choice that he practically, in his own experience, becomes the Lord's indeed. Then it is not by the man's own permission. Then is it not by the man's own permission in choosing the Lord's way that the man becomes the Lord's in practical experience? Amen. Then having done that, don't you see that so long as your choice is there, so long as your wish is there to be the Lord's, don't you see that you are the Lord's indeed? Yeah. Do you see that? Whenever we deliver ourselves up to Him, that is so. But some of you delivered yourselves up long ago, but since then you've become discouraged and wondering whether you were the Lord's or not. And we want people today to get that doubt and question forever out of the way so that whatever comes up, you'll not be bothering yourself about whether you are the Lord's. Just as certainly as your choice is there to be His, you are His. For He bought you long ago. And that's the thing I'm after. Is that what you are after? Yes. You are to take it if you ever get it. Amen. Amen then we can know that we are the Lord's. But now we sometimes hear people talk as though that knowing you are the Lord's was going to sanction sin. In other words, give you permission to be a sinner because I'm the Lord's, now I can sin. No, it will not do that. It will save you from sinning. 
when a man gets into that place and his choice is there to be the Lord's, then God works in him both to will and to do of his own good pleasure. And he is a Christian. Amen. God will make him a Christian. Amen. There, That is the divine power there is in this thing. There's no sanction of sin about it. In fact, it's the only way to keep him keep from sanctioning sin. Any other profession does sanction sin. Any other profession does do just what the Lord complains of. And check this scripture out. That men have made him to serve their sins. Amen. Isaiah chapter 43 verse 24. What does the Lord say? You have made me to serve with your sin. Let's stop that. Let our will and our choice be the Lord's every moment and our conscious, of our conscious days. And then it is a fact. Well, let us turn and read that verse that says so in 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 19, and the last words of the verse. Let's say it out loud together, friends. You are not your own. Again, you are not your own. That is it, is it not? I don't care who the man is. Is he his own? No, sir. The Lord has bought him. And if he does not let the Lord have him, he is robbing the Lord of that which is the Lord's own. And that, that is the mischief of, mischief of it, robbing God. Though he be not consciously and practically the Lord's, yet the Lord has bought every one. And any man who refuses to let the Lord have him, he is robbing the Lord of that which he, the Lord, bought. And for which he, the Lord, paid the price. And he is counting the price which bought him, the person, as worthless than himself. Is not that the same satanic spirit that sought to put itself above God in heaven? The Lord gave himself for us. Then will I not let him have me in that very thing? I count myself worth more than the price that was paid. Then when I will not let him have me, in that very thing of not letting him have me, I count myself worth more than the price that was paid. I'm more important than what God did for me on the cross. And that is worth more than the Lord. And that's the same self that puts itself above God all the time. Oh, let this mind be in you, be in us that was in Christ, who emptied himself, that God and man might again be united in one. Yes. You are not your own, are you? No. Are you not glad of it? Are you not glad you are not your own? Yes. He says so, and it is so, is it not? Why is it? For you are bought with a price. Yes. He bought us, therefore, say it, we are not our own. And before all the people in the world who are not their own, it's the man who has yielded himself to the Lord who has bought him. Yes. Therefore, glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are God's. Whose are they? God's. But I need not dwell longer on these verses, brethren. You will do that, will you? You will dwell on them. And well now, we have read the verses. He gave himself for us. He bought us. How much of us? All of us. When was it that he did it? Before the world. What kind of folks were we before the foundation of the world? What kind of folks were we when God bought us? We were just ourselves, just as we were in this world. And he bought us as sinners, just as we are. Yes. Yes. Now, did, did he, honestly now? We're coming to another thought here. Now, did he pay that price and buy us just as we were sinners? Yes. yes. Evil beings and willing to go into evil ways, willing to do the evil thing, yeah. making no profession of religion and not particularly wanting to. Did he buy us then? Yes. yes. What did he what did he buy just then? He bought us and all there was of us, and as he bought what there was of us, he bought our sins. Yeah. Have you ever thought of that? 
Isaiah describes it, wounds and bruises and putrefying sores, no soundness at all. Is that so? Here's another text from uh, Titus chapter 3, verse 3 through 7. For we ourselves also were sometimes foolish, disobedient, serving divers lusts and pleasures, living in malice and envy, hateful and hating one another. But after that, the kindness and love of God our Savior toward man appeared, not by works of righteousness, which we have done, but according to His mercy, He saves us by the washing of regeneration and renewing of the Holy Ghost, which He shed on us abundantly through Jesus Christ our Savior, that being justified by His grace, we should be made heirs according to the hope of eternal life. And quote, close quote. He did it. He says so. Then do you know that it is so? Yes. Now let's carry that a little further. He gave himself for our sins, but the same thought goes through all. He will not take our sins, although he bought them without our permission. Amen. Look at it a little further, carry the same thought forward. He gave himself for, uh, for whose sins? Ours. <clears throat> whose were they? Ours. He gave himself for them. They being ours, to whom did he give himself when he bought them? Us. He gave himself to me for my sins. Yes. Is that sinking in? Yes. That he bought our sins when he bought us? Yes. Then the choice is forever with me as to whether I would rather have my sins than to have him. Isn't it? Yes. That is the living choice before me, isn't it? Yes. Is that the choice before you? Yes. Which would you rather have, your sins or Christ? Right. Right. Then from this time forward, can there be any hesitation about letting anything go that God shows his sin? Will you let it go when it's pointed out, yeah. Deborah? Will you let it go when it's pointed out, Ricky? Yeah. Will you go let it go when it's pointed out, Brother Harry? Yeah. Will you let it go when it's pointed out, congregation? Yes. When sin is pointed out, Say, I would rather have Christ than that. Now, can you say that out loud? I think this is words that if you haven't written them down, you need to memorize them. Take a screenshot of the screen. When sin is pointed out to you, say, I would rather have Christ than that. Amen? Wow. And let it go. Just, just tell the Lord. Lord, I make the choice now. I make the trade. I make thee my choice. It is gone and I have something better. Thank the Lord. Then where in the world is the opportunity for any of us to get discouraged over our sins? Now, some of the brethren have done something, that very thing. And this was in like a, a meeting that they were having, a series of meetings. So some of the brethren here have done that very thing. They came here free. But the Spirit of God brought up something they never saw before. The Spirit of God went deeper than it ever went before and revealed things they never saw before. And then, instead of thanking the Lord that it was so and letting the whole wicked business go and thanking the Lord, they had ever so much more of Him than they ever had before, they began to get discouraged. And they said, oh, what am I going to do? My sins are so great. And there they let Satan cast a cloud over them and throw them into discouragement. And they, and they get no good out of the meetings day after day, Sabbath after Sabbath. Isn't that too bad? Isn't it too bad that a person whom the Lord has loved so much as to give himself for him at all should act that way with the Lord when the Lord wants to reveal more of himself? Brethren, if any of you have gotten in discouragement, let's quit. If the Lord had brought up sins to us that we never thought of before, that only shows that He's going down to the depths and then He will reach the bottom at last. And when He finds the last thing that is unclean or impure and that is out of harmony with His will and brings that up and shows that to us, and we say, I'd rather have the Lord than that. Say it with me. I'd rather have the Lord than that. And the work is complete. 
and the seal of the living God can be fixed upon that character. Amen. Is that what we want? Yeah. Yeah. To have it so simple. Two things. I've been bought with a price and I am not my own. Can you say that? I have been bought with a price and I am not my own. And then, Lord, I make the choice I want you rather than that. Lord, I make the choice. I want you rather than them. And when we make the choice, God respects that choice because He and the Holy Spirit are, is a gentleman. Then the work is complete and the seal of the living God can be fixed upon that character. Amen. When God decides who is to come and sit with Him forever and eternity, it's people that will have said, Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yeah. And when people that are left on the outside of the city walls and will not be sitting with God for eternity, there are people that said, No, Lord. No, Lord. No, Lord. And God knows when He looks down at the heart who will continue to say yes and who will continue to say no. And what we're saying is, Lord, I make my choice. I'd rather have you, Christ, than that. Yeah. Powerful thoughts for me. So powerful, I thought, well, we should share them here in the sanctuary. Yeah. If you want to know the rest of this sermon, part three. <coughs> Brother Ray's back. <coughs> And after our lunch, we will have another, another opportunity to hear the rest of this sermon, number 17, from A.T. Jones. I was blessed. Were you blessed? I think sometimes, um, I know when, we, when um, what year was it, way back when? 19, probably 1981. We were traveling with Joe Cruz, and he was uh, teaching a small group of us about evangelism. We were in New Orleans, and he said, you know, you don't have to worry about being original. There's nothing original. He said, everything that I got, I got from the people before me, Amen. and everything they got, they got from the people before them. Amen. And hopefully it goes all the way back to the Apostle Paul and the words of Jesus. Amen. Today I believe we studied this out deep. We studied it so that when you leave here, if somebody asks you what did we study, you're going to be able to say, I was bought with a price, I am not my own. Can you say it? I was bought, bought with a price, price, I am not my own. own. And God so respects your choice that when temptation comes to you or God points out sin, what are we going to say? Lord, I choose you and, and that, not that. Wow, that's all I've got to say. Let's go ahead and stand up for our closing hymn. And I want to thank Ron Bigham. Come on, Ron. I threw you a curve of 534, but we're going to sing number 331. And that's going to be our closing, our closing hymn. I don't have anything of that on the screen. I'm going to go back to this slide. We want the seal of God to be, you may stand as we, as we get ready to sing number 331. Um, and Marty, you'll have my mic on so that I can talk at the end of this, uh, of our singing.
that the Lord brings up to me that when I hear such a serious plea that I need to always surrender those to Him. And if there are things like that that are in your heart, I ask that right now you just uh, say to them, to Him, Lord, I choose you and not that.